Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of MC Eternal. How are you guys doing today? How's life? Good. Don't tell anyone. We have our biggest project of the day. A chameleon. He's amazing. Look. <laughs> he changes colors everywhere he goes. Go on the grass. Go. Go. Yeah. I love them. Unfortunately, we need to start today's episode by killing a few withers because we need nether stars. Hello. And apparently bye. And the second one. And the third one. Cool. We're done. We needed that nether star in order to make a portal to the beneath. It's an alternative for the deep dark, but apparently mobs are slightly beefier. I'm also going to make a few night vision potions so that we will not run into any problems. Probably I made too much, but it's okay. Oh, and by the way, I was claiming some of the rewards from the quest and I got an apprentice wand from the wizardry mod, the beneath teleporter. I have no idea where I should put this guy. We put it here. So is it like the deep dark? Do I have to right click? Shift? Shift right click? Oh yeah, it, it was just loading. Sorry. <laughs> so we have our night vision. Let's see what's going on. Holy. It's different from the deep dark. So generally speaking, we should be beefy enough to take down the mobs. But I did make a railgun. And this is why we had to get into Ender IO. And this Ender chest contains all the ammo that we need. Okay, apparently we're not allowed to fly in the dark. That was fast. In the deep dark, it takes time. I have torches everywhere. We should be fine. The base turret goes there. The railgun goes on top. And we just need to hook you up to power and give you ammunition. Good. It's already working. Kill everyone. It's not one shot killing them. How much health do they have? 160. Holy. <laughs> uh, okay. This is going to be fun. You know, we're just looking for osmium. And that's it. I saw a boss mob and he does a lot of damage. I have been mining for a while and unfortunately, I'm not being very lucky because so far I only found one osmium ore. The thing is, it will tell you that it spawns at Y level 20 and uh, it's very rare. <laughs> so maybe we should come up with a different solution. So the open modular turret crashes your game. It's fine. There is something from extra utilities too, which is called a biome marker. If we make this, we should be able to program our quarry. We're back here again, and we don't need to do much. We just need to right click. And this is programmed. And we go back home. So if I'm not wrong, if we put you inside, you should mine the beneath. And you should give me ores from the beneath. These guys don't really count because I put them myself. My solution with the quarry did not work. The thing is, it says that it's mining the beneath, but it's actually not. <laughs> so we have to do manual mining. Which is fine, I like that. Especially since we have insta mining, even on ores. Look. I think at this point in time, you would also notice that I love insta mining. It's such a satisfying thing to do. We have plenty of osmium. We almost have two stacks and a half. It's 25, but you know, it should be more than enough. We already have a facility to double the ores, but if we use a grinding ball, I think we can triple them. Yeah, sometimes you will get two, sometimes you will get three, but it's a good outcome. Now that we have access to osmium, we should start mechanism. In Project Ozone, they made these guys silent. I'm not sure if they're silent now. Oh yeah, they don't make any noises. Nice. This Ender IO sag mill with a grinding ball is amazing. We originally had two and a half stacks of osmium. Now we have four and a half stacks of the dust and three stacks of the ingots. It's so nice. Generally, in order to automate everything that we need from mechanism, you don't need that many machines. You just need a bunch. And if you're not lazy like me with calculations, you actually need far less. The way that I do that is that I make four metallurgic infusers in order to make the alloys and steel. We are also going to need four enrichment chambers because infusing items using compressed carbon, redstone, diamond, and obsidian is far more efficient. Therefore, this guy is going to receive coal and this guy is going to receive redstone. I would like to mention that you don't need an interface up there. You can just get away with an export bus. I just put them there because I didn't know which machines are going where. I will remove them. The third enrichment factory is going to receive diamonds and the fourth one is going to receive refined obsidian. And it's going to require a crafting card because your system has to know how to craft it so that it will put it inside. This is input. So basically, this is our entire setup in order to make steel. Enriched Alloy, Advanced Alloy, and Atomic Alloy, and all the circuits. There are four more slots left and I'm going to have an Osmium Compressor, a Crusher, and two Smelting Factories. 
that should be more than enough. And this is our entire mechanism and Ender IO setup. We're good for now and I was thinking we might as well try to make a digital miner and go to the beneath. I actually put it on auto crafting because we have a lot of molecular assemblers and I'm like uh, we don't have that many recipes. We actually don't need all the ores, we need the ores from nuclear craft as well as osmium. And maybe diamonds. Yeah, why not? It's not gonna work. It's going to require 245,000 RF to run? Am I reading this wrong? Are you crazy? I'm extremely confused. Uh, let's take out the speed upgrades. Yeah, without any speed upgrades, it's actually working. But I'm very confused. This is very weird. Uh, we need to think about increasing our RF generation. Lush, what are you doing outside during the night where there are deadly creatures around? Don't you know it's dangerous? No, of course not. I'm the most deadliest creature around. Unfortunately, the deadliest creature of the night is also sad because he wants to increase RF generation, but he doesn't know how. I mean, he can add more dynamos, but he doesn't want to add more dynamos. He wants a different method. So let's go hunt a dragon and get a dragon steel armor so that maybe by that time I come up with an idea. In one of the reward packs, I found this torch launcher from Cyclic and uh, it's really neat because yeah, it does that. I think I just saw a sea serpent. I think. Oh yeah! I was going to say I was wrong, but apparently I was not wrong. Uh, we need some scales. Come on. Come here. Come here. Where did you go? Holy. Uh, stop. Stop. Thank you. We have 12. That was a big one. I found this very weird looking structure and I just wanted to see what's inside and I did hear a dragon. I'm just not sure where he is. We dig down, we will see. Yes, and he's not very happy. He just had to dig down straight. <laughs> nice. Oh my goodness. We fell down. It's too dark, I can't see you dude. This is not going well. What the hell is that guy? You know, I'm just shooting in the door, hoping that I'm hitting him. Oh my goodness, this is not good. We run away, we need to regroup. I was not expecting to fall on top of his head, but it's fine. He's almost dead. I think he's dead, yes. Very good. And it's amazing, a troll who's a boss and who's hasty. In all seriousness, what is that? <laughs> it's giving me blindness and wither? Hello? He dropped something. Cool. Clearing this area actually takes much more time than killing the actual dragon. We need those. Uh, we just want blood. That's it. We have 11. Very good. We have 32 dragon blood and we should be able to craft 32 dragon steel. And our boy is going to do that for us. Do your job. Are you far away? It's facing the wrong way. I also thought that since our boy is working, we might as well try to provide him with some food. If I put it here, it will dabble it anyway. So I don't have to hunt that many animals. Oh, that was a quest. Apparently, if you have 16 in your inventory, you will get a quest. He's tier 5. Look how big he is! Can we ride him? Yeah, look! He's really big! <laughs> I think he does more damage. We should get him armor very soon. And now that he's bigger, the forge is actually working much faster. Cool! In the comments of the previous episode, some of you guys were confused how the bow works and how did I get sharpness 10 on my sword. So let's go through this one more time. It's used in order to combine enchantments. So I put protection 4 on this guy, we take it out, we put another protection 4, and now it's protection 8. Cool. In this mod pack, we do not have draconic evolution or any other form of disenchantment, so we're going to use actually additions. We drop it with a book, and we get the enchantment. So this enchantment book is now protection 8. Technically, any enchantment that you have, you can double it with the bow. It does not really have to be something which applies to the bow. It can be protection, it can be efficiency, it can be fortune, it can be looting. So it can be any enchantment. I love this armor. It looks amazing. 
I also made an armor for our boy, it's not diamond armor because I could not afford the diamonds, it's just basic iron one, and in order to make the dragon steel armor, uh, that's kind of expensive, so that might have to wait, because we need blocks, and I barely could afford it for myself. We are just behind our base and I thought we start with a new project today. I do have an idea for RF generation but I think it's too crazy and ambitious so maybe I should rethink it a little bit. <laughs> today we want to start working on a coke oven. We all know how a coke oven from immersive engineering works. It's a 3x3x3 cube and you just hammer it using an engineer's hammer and voila! You have a coke oven. You put your coal inside and you will get coal coke as well as creosote oil. We technically don't need the coal coke, we just need the creosote oil and this is why we're going to try and set it up. Normally how I do this is that, um, well I try to go with traditional coke ovens and I try to cover it using bricks, like so. Well of course with more details, sometimes we put something which makes smoke and so on and so forth but I think this time maybe we should go with something a little bit different. Because if we repeat the same thing over and over again then it's no longer fun. So let's try and get creative. In real life, using small brick ovens is the traditional method of making cold coke, but we want to go with something more modern. If you search for images of an industrial coke oven, you would come up with something like this. Of course, this is just a demo so that I can show you, but the idea is you will have a blast proof door so that the heat can be contained inside, and inside you will have your blocks of coal, or coal in real life. <laughs> you will have fire, you will have flames, you will have a lot of smoke and everything, and uh, once the cold coke is done, the oven will open and everything will just spew out. So that's what we want to try and replicate here. I'm not sure how, but um, let us try that. Yeah, I would say if we want to go with a design like this, this should be an appropriate size. It's seven tall and that should be more than enough. Because in any case, this has no function. This is just for aesthetics. We're going to have actual coke ovens inside or maybe a redstone furnace with an augment. I am not sure. In the comment section of the previous videos, especially in Project Ozone, some of you guys have been telling me that you don't understand what we are trying to do, but you find it cool anyways. The thing is, thank you for the compliment, but I actually prefer if you also understand what we are trying to do. So from now on, I'll try to explain a little bit more, <laughs> maybe. Uh, what we are trying to do here is to try and get creosote oil. It's from immersive engineering and it has a bunch of uses. First off, you can burn it in order to generate RF, which is not very efficient, but it's a method but mainly we want it in order to make treated wood. Treated wood has uses in different recipes in immersive engineering which we need in order to progress, but it's also a cool looking wood and it does not burn. So we want creosote oil. And the only way to get creosote oil is to use a coke oven from immersive engineering, which is just behind us right there, or to try and use a redstone furnace with a special augment. That will give us a teeny tiny bit, but it's still not that bad. So I did make two redstone furnaces and we are going to upgrade them. You here, you here, then I brought some kit and the augment. So this redstone furnace is now our coke oven and it will generate creosote oil. It's smaller and I think it's faster because we can upgrade it furthermore with some augments. I also think it's not a very bad idea if we start with the function first and then get to the facade because I still have to make a lot of changes and I don't know how I want to do them. So I did bring a flux plug if I can find it. So these guys are going to require power, they are processing items so we need an item conduit and they are also processing fluid therefore we have a fluid conduit and I need to sleep. Yeah even with the speed upgrades they are pretty slow but it's fine. So for now I'm going to put our input chest here and I do have an item conduit which leads to the redstone furnaces and if we put the coal inside they should just go into the redstone furnaces and they are active. Very good. And since we have two of them it's better to put this on round robin so that both of them would get equal number of coal blocks. I actually need just a little bit of treated wood so let's use our creosote oil and make some. Yeah I just need like four fences so maybe one more bucket. And in case you're wondering this is how you will get treated wood but we're trying to over engineer it a little bit so that it's more fun. Since we're also generating coal coke I guess it makes sense to try and store them as well and for that I'm going to make a silo from immersive engineering. I basically wanted to know how tall it's going to be so let's make it form somehow. Cool. The input of the silo is at the top and the output is at the bottom. So if we want to insert items into the silo, we need to do it from the top. I did make a dropping conveyor belt. So if we put you here, items should go inside. Actually, that won't look nice. It has to go one block higher. 
I broke it. Yeah, I think I'm going to use an item conduit for now so that whenever we drop items, they will go inside the silo and then I can cover it up with a facade or something. So let's try and see if this works. How do I drop something? <laughs> an item conduit is not going to work, so we're going to use a hopper. Let's see if this one works. If we drop you, will you go into the hopper? Did you? Yeah, it's in the silo. Ideally, the way that I want this to work is that whenever we put blocks of coal inside our chest, this guy will close down, it will start the process of making coal coke, and whenever it's done, it will open up and it will start breaking the blocks and we would be able to see it. The problem is, I don't know how to do that. I'm going to use mechanical users anyway, but uh, wiring them is going to be a challenge. So this is not the final setup. We're just going to make it functional for now. And for that, uh, we are going to use ender chests. I need one block of you. Yes, and we put the second one here and then we set it up so that it will go inside the conveyor belt and goes to the silo. The only question is, how do I get out? Can I do this? It's good that all of them are going in. Cool. We have 24, five. Oh, it's in the hopper, okay. <laughs> now comes the important part. We are doing all of this in order to make treated wood. So let's try to automate the production of it. I'm using an ender tank and we're going to put another one somewhere. Yeah, I'm guessing the other one goes here so that we can make a pipe. We're going to use a pipe from immersive engineering because it looks amazing. For making the actual treated wood, we're going to use the assembler from immersive engineering. And the good thing about this guy is that it does not require a bucket in order to craft items. It has an internal tank of eight buckets and that should be more than enough to make treated wood. And it's facing the correct way. Cool. Actually, the pipe has to come one block lower because uh, the pipe on that thing is one block lower. So we put you here and we connect you again. And this guy is getting creosote oil. Perfect. We're going to give you power and we're going to set the recipe. And if you have the ingredients, you should start crafting. And the reason that I'm using a conduit here and not the pipe itself is because we also need to import the wood. And for that, we need an item conduit. So function wise, this is complete. We have our treated wood, we have our coke oven, and we have our cold coke. We just have to make a facade and make the block thingy, which I just mentioned, and try to make it look nice, which we will do next episode, because uh, I don't think it's a wise decision to focus on one project. Of course, now that we have access to treated wood, we would be able to work a little bit more on our colony over there, because now we can make barbed wires, flamethrowers, and guns in order to protect our villagers from bandits. Last episode, I told you guys that garnets look nice. Unfortunately, they're extremely rare. That might look a lot, but you must remember that you need nine of them to make a block. So it's still very expensive. I have a problem with spawning lizards. They drop a lot of items and some of them end up on the roof, which is weird. Anyway, our next project, which is our last project for today, is to set up a new mob farm. This one provides us with basic loot and now we need some specific loots. So we need to go to the nether and find a blaze. Will I make the jump? Probably not. I did. I'm amazing. I know. The problem with having so many mobs in one mod pack is that whenever you're looking for a vanilla mob, you can't find it. I'm looking for a blaze. You know, these guys will also work like a blaze, but the problem is, um, I want a blaze. I think there is a blaze spawner. Oh, I wanted the wither skeleton as well. He's gone. This new mob farm that we're going to make right next to the old version is going to be a powered spawner one. So for now we have Enderman and we will have Blazing Juggernaut. I could not find the blaze. <laughs> and in order to control which type of mobs we want to spawn, we're also going to use a redstone receiver from RF Tools. And I did make some buttons. So this one is for Enderman. I renamed them in an anvil. We shift right click and now it's set to channel one. We're going to have another one for the blaze. And the third one is going to be for wither skeletons. We are going to spawn more mobs and I'm hoping once we go to the twilight forest, we will get one of those small ghasts so that we will also get gas tears. But for now, these are the only ones we have. So that's gonna do. And the redstone mode on the spawners is set to active with a signal so that we can activate them using the buttons. I made too many screens, but generally you are going to need only one screen and one screen controller. And then he will find the screen and we have to put the buttons. So here we can specify the name of the button and also put it on toggle mode. And this is why I named them so that I know which one is which. If I press this button, we should get wither skeletons. It's not a very wise choice because it's open. Yeah, we do. Nice. I have to turn it off. And obviously we also have a mob crusher here and we're going to give it some upgrades and also a range 4 upgrade. 
so it can cover the entire place. I'm not sure, I think this is too tall. Yeah, it's okay. Once we have our new mobs, we will decide on the height. Yes, it does work. And it's also making us essence. The problem is that that mob farm is not producing that much essence and it's also not providing us with enough ender pearls as well as wither skeleton skulls. This one should be much better. I'm not saying this farm is unnecessary because we're getting sulfur, we're getting gunpowder, we're getting experience and we're also getting some rotten flesh bones and etc over here, which is fine. Uh, that one will give us more specific loot and also more experience because we need a lot of experience. I'm playing with the colors, but I'm still thinking, eh, it could be improved. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the thing is, I started making the same pattern over here, and then I noticed it's too repetitive. So I started using prismarine walls, and then I noticed you don't actually see them much. So I thought maybe we can go with something like this. The only problem is, I don't know how tall the tower is going to be. So that thing might go up or go lower. But I think it's cool. It looks evil. I like it. Alright guys, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Next episode we will work a little bit more on our colony and get into bewitchment a bit more. Let's see how it goes. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.